All right, well, you see it is snowing in Kentucky. We got a real bad winter storm coming this way, so I thought this would be an interesting time for me to do a little experiment because uh, the RV is not winterized, and normally we don't winterize it uh, because usually in the first week of January we try to run away and take off, go, go south. But we got an extreme event coming in. It's going to be like down zero, one degrees, and not, not, it's going to stay single digits, I think, for two days, three maybe. Crazy cold weather. So I'm going to do a little test. I'm going to see if, if two ceramic heaters can keep my RV from freezing up. Because I got propane on board. I can turn the furnace on if need be. So here's my plan of attack. So I've got one ceramic heater right here, sitting right there. Got it set on the high setting, so it's 1500 watts. I've got it set at the lowest dial here. So I think it kicks in, you know, around 38, 39 degrees, somewhere in that range. Uh, I got me a little thermometer there to, to watch things. What are we sitting at right now? Yeah, we got 30, 40, was it about 50 degrees? Uh, yeah, because it high got about 50 degrees today, but it's dropping about 50 degrees come morning. It's going to be crazy. So I got that, and I've got it plugged up to a de dedicated circuit uh, cord right there. I got two 20 amp circuits feeding this building. So I got that one there feeding. Let's go around the other side. Excuse my messes. You know me, I've got several projects going on at the same time. And I got me another little ceramic heater back here. Then my wet bay, kind of the same way. Got it sitting in there. Got it set on the high setting for 1500 watts. It too is on a dedicated circuit right there. And uh, I'll show you what we're going to do. Uh, that, that door ain't going to matter because it's not. In the basement area all right so all my doors doors are closed up let's go inside and i'll show you what i'm gonna monitor in there so we can uh get oh yeah get a good test another thing i've done it's kind of unique because i always have been concerned about the basement area of course you, you may or may not know this but with a 38j our water tanks we've got two big water tanks that sit right here in the middle and the way they stay warm is through, you see our little vents here? It's like a small trunk line that goes all the way right down the middle to the very back of the RV where the, the furnace is. And it's got some louvers cut into that, uh, into that trunk line that blows heat directly onto the water tanks underneath. So I always wondered, there's not a good way to know what temperature those water tanks are. So I ran me a wire and attached it to the side of the water tank. So I know right now my water tank temperature is 43 degrees. So I'll know for sure that all those lines, even the ones way up here, are, are taken care of. So what else we got back here? So right inside the RV, we're currently 50 degrees. And we got that one sitting there. And I got my little laser gun. So, so when the ceramic heater is running, that heat comes right up through this area right here. Right down in there is the wet bay. So I'll shoot this from time to time, check our temperature, check the toilet and make sure everything stays above freezing. And of course I gotta worry about my washing machine that's running behind there too. So that's gonna be my little experiment over the next day or two. Kind of keep a monitor on this, be kind of curious to see. If it works out, then then you you can know well for sure if you you have a 38J it's like this or any most RVs, two ceramic heaters can take care of it. But because I haven't proven that yet, I'm hoping it'll work. So stay tuned. It's going to get cold. All right. Well, update number one. It's almost four o'clock in the morning. It's already two degrees. I mean, the temperature drops so fast. It's amazing. So inside the RV, still doing pretty good. 45 degrees. And while I was in here, I just heard my little ceramic heater kick on. Uh, down from down on the wet bay and see the wet bay down there is 43 44 degrees so so far it's holding its own because it's early yet it'll take a while for the RV probably to, to get really that cold give it a few more hours and we'll so water tanks sitting at 42 degrees 42.6 they've dropped a little bit so anyway I'll let this Things settle down here for a few, few more hours. I think they say about 8 a.m. we may get below zero. We'll see. I'll keep you updated. Oh, another interesting thing. See like here the 
garage door it's sitting at 12 degrees with outside temperatures seeing it's two RV sitting at 22 and I got some water here in the tray and ice is just now starting to form on it so so the building itself is hold, you know, it's not insulated but it's holding in just a little, little bit of heat where it's dropped so quick so we'll give it give it a few more hours and it'll probably get way down there also now I can't tell you how good it feels to step inside of this house with this wood stove look at the house right now about 77 degrees uh, so it really feels nice really appreciate that wood heat good stuff hey it's the next day and it's still crazy cold we got here temperature is minus two zero degrees that's the metal there on, on the door so yes it's what the RV is it's five degrees pretty cold pretty cold um, we're not going to quite make it with ceramic heaters it don't look like got really close uh, and I did do something I, I bumped the temperature up because so it wouldn't be cycling I crank the temperature up so it stays on all the time but even in this little compartment here, what are we, about 45. Nice toasty in there. But we've got one area that's not doing so good. Let me show you. Inside the RV feels, feels decent. We're at 37 degrees. Now this area is fine here. Let me get down here where the, where my pipes are. It's 51 degrees. Let's see here. Yeah, 40 degrees. And you can see the water's still flowing. The the weak link though is back here in the bathroom. Uh, these pipes back here see 27 degrees. Yep, so we're not. The water's still flowing in the toilet though. Nothing's froze. But I am gonna have to supplement a little bit of heat, it looks like, to uh to keep everything protected. I was hoping the ceramic heaters would do it, but just not quite. So let me get some extra heat on here and see if we can't get the the toilet area a little bit warmer. Okay, so I think we figured out a way to do this. It finally got down to six below last night. It's about nine o'clock in the morning. And uh, things are looking pretty good. That's, ooh, that's really what's warmed up. What I did different, I added a third ceramic heater. I had to put it on low setting because I wouldn't, didn't want to max out, max out the, the amps. So I put that little, that little heater there on low, because so I still got the one in the wet bay below the bathroom, and then I got the one that's where the water pump is under the refrigerator. So with those three running, it's keeping everything above freezing. Now I got to think about one more test I was going to do, because now my water tanks are getting close. I got So I got my water tanks, they're sitting right at 32.5, because remember I got that thermometer taped right to the side of the tank. So I got to wondering, you know how we got the auto heater? So on these Winnebago's anyway, you got this the coach heater. So I'm turning that on. And so what that does, it, it draws air from, a, from above and sucks it down into the basement then blows it through the trunk line through the vent. So I'm going to let that run for an hour. I'm going to see if that has any effect. I did notice already a temperature change because when I first put my, hang on, let me find my thermometer. Where'd it go? Well, I set the moment of my laser pointer. So I got that blower on. When I first checked it a while ago, it was 30 degrees. So it's already 38. So it does tell me, it does draw the warm air that's up above here and pulling it through. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna see if that, by, run, by running the auto heater off the dash and that air blowing out, if that will also warm up my water tank. I think it will because I've been in there before and I've seen those louvers. I think I mentioned that before. There's louvers under that trunk line that blows warm air onto the onto the water tanks. So I'm going to let that run for about an hour and I'll come back and uh, see what things look like. But I, I think we've got it proven. You can with three ceramic heaters, even below zero. And let me just show you the water still runs. Water, water pumps on. Let's see if we... Hot and cold both still work. It was pretty close. I didn't think we pulled it off, but it looks like we may have. So let me follow up with this last test. I'll be back in a little bit. So it's been about another hour as it went by, and it is, it's actually warming up. Turning on that auto heater, I can tell, well, even the, the thermostat here is now up to 50 degrees. So it came up a little bit. And when I first, before I turned on the auto heater, 
the vent, I, it was, th I think, 30 degrees. And now it's up to 49. Oh, 50. There it is. There it is. You can see it's, it is taking the warm air that's be, from the ceramic heaters and warming up the vents. Now my water tanks are still, they haven't buzzed yet, 32.5. Of course, I imagine that big mass of water would take a while for it to, to budge. But I wanted to explain a little bit better what the auto heater is. Because it sits, there's a box that sits right here underneath the floor in the basement. And of course, at the moment, the blower is blowing. Of course, there's no warmth to it whatsoever. It's just bringing what warmth I've got from the ceramic heaters. It draws it through. Like I see we got these return vents right there. So it's drawing that air in and then push and then redirecting it into the trunk line into the vent that comes out here. And I think we've got like there's four throughout the, the floor in here. You got four vents. But I've got them all blocked off except for that one. Remember there's louvers about midway point that blows air down onto the water tanks. So and so it's like when we're driving, like we take off to Florida, even though we've got a 180 degree thermostat. Because that, that 180 degree water pumps out of the engine, goes down the frame rail, goes into the auto heater, and goes right back to the engine. And, you know, it'll get the RV nice and toasty as we're traveling. We never have to use uh, our propane to warm the RV up. We just use the engine heat. So that uh, Winnebago auto heater, it's a weird name for it, but that's what they call it. But it uh, does a great job. So I'll keep experimenting and see what, what else I can learn. So I think I'm going to wrap up my experiment. It looks like uh, now I know what I need to know. Uh, I know if I get down to zero degree weather, I can run three ceramic heaters and it will take care of the RV. Barely, but it will take care of it. But I did find out what will help is running the auto heater. And I told you about the auto heater up here. We have the coach heater. By running that, it has really helped. Let me show you. Because Before I turned that on, when I shot the vent here, I was at 32 degrees. See, now look at our temperature. Yeah, 53 degrees in the vent. So that, and also our temperature on the water tank is, is went, went up. So I'm almost 37 degrees. Where before it was, uh, it was like, what was it? 33, no, 32.5, I believe is the lowest I've seen it. But running the auto heater does work. So that also tells me if you're in a cold area and, and you all, all you have is ceramic heaters running, maybe you're out of propane or something like that. By running the auto heater you will push that heat down into the basement area and the whole reason i got this little thermometer is many years ago and i got a video on, on it uh we were stuck in south dakota for like three days got out there in a blizzard like three foot snow a big blizzard all the highways got shut down and we was running low on propane running out of fuel we wasn't ready for it and we was having a heck of a time and the rv was like it was like 50 degrees in the rv when we woke up that morning and I was concerned because I had no way of knowing the temperature of the, of the water in the basement. Because remember, in this basement, uh, with the 38J anyway, I have, we have two 40-gallon tanks. One, one sits here, one sits here. So, and, and with this thermometer, the way it's, it works is it doesn't have like a remote uh, where you have to have batteries in it. This has like a 10-foot long wire on it. At the end of it is a sensor. So, and, and what I did, I asked, because this is, in, this is the slide mechanism, and of course I needed to get it inside, un, into the side of the basement. So I just followed the wires, the wires that power the entertainment center, that go through the accordion looking thing on the slide mechanism and goes into the basement. Well, I just ran that wire through that. And I had to take that side panel off where you access the, the water tanks and taped it directly to the side of the water tank. So that's how I'm able to get this, this data. And uh, so, on my next real cold adventure, I can know exactly, like for this example here, I knew exactly what temperature was in the basement area without guessing and worrying if something was going to freeze and break. But uh, so far, uh, la uh, last night we got like six below zero and everything's okay with uh, without running any propane, just to uh, run the ceramic heaters. So I guess that'll wrap it up. Thank you all for watching. Have a blessed day. See you, bye.